So we're going to take a look now at using SQL Server with our database uh, and connecting to it using ASP.NET. Um, on our past videos we've used Access and Access is a small database. It's good uh, for very small um, installations and small websites um, but if you're going to have very many people using this at all like more than one or two uh, you're probably going to want to go ahead and step up to a SQL database um, it's just a little more robust it can handle more concurrent users um, you don't have the data corruption problems and those kinds of things um, so we're going to test SQL using the local um, version of SQL that was installed with Visual Web Developer 2010 um, and so it's pretty easy to create a new database you just add a new item and you add a new SQL Server database and you can call it anything you'd like we'll call this one SQL test it wants to put it in app data and that's just fine and we think for a little bit here and now all of a sudden we have our database now this database you can't just take this MDF file and put it on a web server and have it work it has to be on a SQL server this is the local version of SQL it's good for testing um, it's good for doing the initial development and those kinds of things uh, but when it's time to actually get ready to work on the production device or the production uh, site uh, you want to get it over on an enterprise SQL like a MySQL or a Microsoft SQL um, there's not an easy way to port from here to one of the to one of those enterprise uh, levels so you use this for um, testing um, and develop a little bit of developing uh, but when it's time to get the actual product going you want to be over on the, the enterprise add a new table simple we just right click and add a new table uh, and it wants to wants us to fill in some information uh, so let's just keep sticking with our state example so we'll have state ID uh, we'll have state name state uh, code state bird and state flower um, it's okay if bird and flower are null I don't mind that but these other three I want them to be required uh, state ID I want to change this over to an integer so now we're looking at using the actual uh, database data types that you're probably familiar with so here's integer uh, state name let's change that to um, an in bar state code let's set, leave that as an in car and set it to tw uh, 2 So if you remember from database, if we have uh, cars, characters, they have to be this long. So it has to be two. One, you get an error. Three, you get an error. Uh, var car are variable characters. It can be anywhere between zero and 50. Won't allow 51, but you can be anywhere uh, 50 or, or fewer. Uh, so we've got the database set there. Uh, I need to declare the primary key. You just right click it and do set primary key. With this still highlighted, I'm going to set this up as our identity. So we're going to leave it, make sure it's highlighted. Scroll down here to identity specification. Is identity, we're going to click yes. And here we can uh, tell it how many we're going to increment for each line. Uh, and our seed, we're going to start at one. You could just as easy start at 100 or 1,000 or 100,000 or whatever. So we have those things uh, done. Let's save it. Uh, now it'll want to know the, the table name, so let's save it as uh, states. We can right click it and do show table data. And we're now able to go in and add our information, so Iowa.
So I've just added some information in here, some sample data, stored it in the states table. Um, again, these were the required uh, fields, and they're filling in um, these three. Uh, and these are not required, so I've got a little sample across there. Uh, some of them have both, some have one, some none. Save all this up. Now I can jump back to the Solution Explorer, which is where we've spent a lot of time already. I'm going to add a new item. A web form. Now, just like before I added access data source, now I'm going to add a SQL data source. Configure the data source. There's no connection string, so I'm going to make a new connection here. Pick the database. Uh, and I do want to save this connection string. I'm going to save it as uh, SQL test. advanced I'm gonna do the insert update and delete statements now if you click on if you try to come in here and click on this and it's grayed out you probably don't have a primary key specified so you need to go back to your database and set a primary key and then when you come back these will be available to you excellent now I save that as a connection string and the connection string shows up here in the web config file and again this is more of that modularity so this connection string specifies the database that we want to use the uh, username and password for that database other any other information about the database in this one location here in the web config so now later uh, if I wanted to use a different database or a different server I could come in here and make this change to the connection string now all of the data sources that are pointing to this connection string will pick up those changes. So it's, again, it's the change it in one place and it replicates throughout um, the entire site. Uh, stick this in a grid view, connect it up to our data source, and our data source is pointing to that connection string. Editing and deleting. You can save this. And now let's test it in the browser. So there we go. Just that simply, we are connected to our database. And our updates and deletes are working correctly. And notice uh, state ID is not editable. Okay, so the other thing I want to do is be able to do an insert. So let me create a new, add a new item. Web form, let's call this insert. Add a new SQL data source. Now look, it's my connection string. So I'm going to grab my connection string. So everything about connecting to the database, it's picking up out of that line in web.config. And I'll add a details view. Point it to the data source. I need to go set my default mode. Oops. Notice here it's going to have state ID. I don't want the users being able to type state ID in there, so I'm going to just remove that real quick. Uh, I don't want them to mess up the primary key and the naming structure or the numbering structure, so I'm going to just remove that field. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to set this default mode to insert. Save it up.
it's working. So you notice um, when we created the inserts, uh, we did not have the same problem that we had with ASP. With ASP, we had to, after we created the insert, we had to go uh, into the source code um, and remove uh, the the ID or the auto incremented field uh, because when it was connecting to access it was trying to add that you don't have that problem with SQL so you just set the insert and uh, it's off and running there's no problem at all with it after that so again this is just very basic uh, how to add a SQL database uh, to your ASP project uh, and how to, to connect into it using the SQL data sources uh, and connection strings um, you should have everything you need to know uh, now to move forward with your uh, roles based homework